Hi there folks, welcome back to my channel and for this video I'm going to be looking at some more Scottish produce and what I'm going to be looking at today is, is something that I have come across before but I've never actually sat and tried their produce or, or tried their stuff and so that I could have known that they've been out there and I thought well as I'm doing these videos perfect time to go and treat myself to what it is they do and see what it's like. So before I get on to the main body of the video, uh, if you are enjoying my videos, if you are enjoying my channel, if you can click on the subscriber button, click on that notification bell, leave some likes, leave some comments, it's always really appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel further, I will post a link to the channelscoffee.com page in the description bar below and in a pinned comment in the comment section. So with that out of the road, to get onto the main topic of this video, what I'm going to be talking about is uh, Cairn and Moore. And I think they're, they're based up in Perthshire, if I remember correctly. Uh, and yeah, just to see what the address is. Yeah, they are, they are, they are based up in Errol in Perthshire. So this is a uh, perfect uh, soft fruit country. So uh, they're, they're generally well known for uh, the wine that they produce. But I have uh, no, I have come across something on their website. And this is in relation to what I've seen in the video that I did for the Lost Oaks Cider. Oh no, no the Lost Orchard Cider. Uh, when I've seen that, I'd also thought came across somebody else who's doing Scottish Cider. Uh, Ken and Moore are actually producing their own cider now. And if I remember correctly, it's called Pictish Cider. So I'd be kind of interested to look at that as well. But again, as I was saying, they are, Ken and Moore are quite known for their fruit wines. So the one that I have gone gone for is their Bramble Wine. And after that, I do kind of quite like uh, the label that they use on this bottle. And it's kind of quite a kind of, it's almost like one of the kind of Celtic kind of Pictish uh, beasties that they use on it. It's that kind of Pictish Celtic kind of art style that they use on the on the front cover on the, the front label. And they do have kind of like the kind of the Celtic knotwork on the the the, the, the side of the, the label as well. So this one is described as being a dark, deeply tangy tang for dry exit strategy. So that could be interesting. And it does say to to serve at room temperature, so essentially treat it like uh, a, a general red wine. So I'll just try to get the lid off. So, but with it coming from Perthshire, they probably will use a lot of the locally grown soft fruit. Well, it does have a very fruity smell to it. Because uh, Perthshire is known very much for being Scotland's soft fruit area. Let's put the lid back on because no matter like I probably spill it all, spill it, just spill it everywhere, and that wouldn't be nice at all. Yeah, so I've poured myself a wee glass. So again, just really like the colour of it. it; just has a really nice kind of ruby colour to it. It has a kind of very much kind of just like kind of uh, the blackberries that you get. Has a, again has has a very light kind of fruity smell to it. It does remind me of kind of brambles, obviously with it being a bramble wine. And it just, it just reminds me of all the kind of times I used to go bramble picking as a kid. Let's give it a wee try. Okay, I'm no wine expert. But it just has that really nice, light, fruity taste to it. And there definitely is that, just like tang to it, but it doesn't, it's not overpowering in any way. It's just a really nice kind of just tang to the, to the aftertaste. And yeah, it's probably just one of those kind of wines that you probably have to be quite careful with because it's quite light, it's quite fruity. Probably really easy to drink, but it's just a really nice wine. It's just a really nice tasting fruit wine. And 
I have to admit, I'm not the biggest wine drinker out there, but <clears throat> I would definitely try some more of their, their fruit wines. And again, I, I think they do have a visitor centre up in Perthshire, which I probably will try and visit when things, as things start to calm down a wee bit more and kind of get out more. So I'll definitely be keeping an eye out to see when, they're, when they manage to reopen. And yeah, so I would definitely get some more of their, the fruit wine. I'll definitely try and get myself a bottle of the Pictish cider as well. And yeah, so hopefully one of these days, hopefully soon, I'll be able to get up to the visitor centre that they have at their winery and get myself some more of the wine. Hopefully get myself a bottle of the Pictish cider as well. And yeah, we could hopefully I'll be able to kind of shoot a wee video and let you see what what their 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 winery is like. So yeah, so that possibly a video for for the future. But hopefully you will have enjoyed this video. Hopefully you will all be intrigued and interested in Cairn and more and will want to go and sample some of the products. So I'm gonna sign off just now. Hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. And I will possibly go and enjoy enjoy another little glass of Kiernamore's Bramble Wine. So I'll see you all later. Bye bye.